Uh, how would you make an ex jealous? Uh, I wouldn't encourage that. My question isn't how would you make an ex jealous? My question is why do you want to? This, and, and, and I understand that when people go through these type of dynamics, you want revenge. When someone has a fantasy of revenge, that lets me know that there's still some healing that needs to be done. The problem is, is that let's, and I can only assume that there's some narcissism or some toxicity in the background <clears throat> with, with this. The problem is when you start trying to uh, make an ex jealous, they feel like they need to one up. And guess what? Let's say that this goes on for a year. That's a year that you could have been working on yourself, working on this wound and working on healing and not giving a shit what they're doing. Right. Where the goal is not to get back at someone because then because then if they, it, it turns into this game. Right. And so the, the jealousy, let's say that I, let's say that my answer was, um, well, find someone that's hotter than them. And there's dating coaches and people that out there that will tell you to do that. Find someone that's hotter, better looking, more money. Uh, let me and, and let, let me tell let me tell you a story because that, that this actually comes up very this actually comes up often, more often than what people think. This is what's called your defensive self. People do this all the time. They'll break up with someone, and this isn't just with, uh, with narcissism. If you want to know more about the defensive self, uh, there's a book called Whole Again. Uh, it's in my bookstore. You can go to the, uh, to the link in my bio. You can go to my bookstore. It's called Whole Again. It's available on Audible, uh, and, or you can read the, the actual physical book. But when you're living by your defensive self, when you're making decisions based on an X, basically, if I had to paraphrase, you start making some absolutely terrible decisions, right? So let's say that you um, listen to some other coach or therapist that says get some, find someone, uh, find someone um, hotter, better looking, more money than them, right? So you're choosing someone not based on their character, but based on the fact that you want to make your other person jealous. I had, a, I had a, someone that, that ran into this. They wanted to make their narcissistic ex jealous. And her revenge fantasy was that she wanted her narcissist, narcissistic ex to see her being wined and dined by some rich, wealthy, well-to-do, but also very well, um, very uh, well-respected in the community. Man, that sounds like it would be a great situation. Right, some millionaire that does fundraisers, takes around on the town, goes on vacations. Well, guess what? She found that guy, right? And so exactly what she thought. She she was being wined and dined. They were going to fundraisers, all these major events. Was waiting for the opportunity for her ex to walk in and for uh, for him to see her. Well, guess what? The new person was another narcissist and worse than the one before. People do these type of things all the time where instead of healing, they are trying to make the other person jealous. They'll buy cars that they can't afford, houses that they can't afford, because they're not thinking logically. They're thinking about trying to piss off the other person. So I encourage you, instead of trying to make the other person jealous, work on healing this wound, letting go of what they think of you, right? And, and it's, it's common. I'm not getting on you or anything like that. But this, but revenge fantasies are a sign that you have wounds that need to be healed. So focus on healing that wound. And, and once again, for anyone who's going through this, uh, I encourage you to read the book whole again. Um, again, it's linked in my, link in my bio. I have a bookstore and it is uh, there. Uh, so no longer in love with your husband, what to do? Um, I don't know the entire dynamics. I don't know if this person is uh, narcissistic. I don't know if this is, um, if this is, if this person is a good person that, um, that you fell out of, lo out of love with. But when we're you, I'm going to assume that this is a non-abusive relationship, right? Before uh, and I talk about breaking up and I talk about divorces all the time, right? And a lot of times people, um, I've had people that, you know, that will come in and they'll ask if someone is a narcissist. I'm like, it doesn't sound narcissistic to me, but if you're looking for an excuse to leave, right, you don't need my permission to allow for you to leave. Um, you, it's worth exploring why you fell out of love. Is this a situation where the two of you guys stop courting each other, stop dating each other, 
um, that you know you got once you guys started having kids once you guys started to once the the pressures of the relationship the responsibility of the relationship right but it's worth exploring your own personal boundaries on what what uh, what the dynamics of the relationship actually is right because love is an emotion right there's going to be there's people who are in a healthy relationship will tell you that there's days where they can't stand their husband or their wife right we can't put the pressure of trying to keep you know I hear all the time I'm no longer happy in this relationship right it's one thing if the relationship is abusive that's understandable right but when we're talking about like there's a lot of reasons why you might not might not be it might might not be happy in a relationship it could actually be work related it could actually be the fact that you feel like you are doing all of the taking up all the responsibility again in a non narcissistic relationship Right. It is worth exploring and worth having these type of conversations with the other person. Right. And so a way that you can begin to have the dialogue and begin to open up the communication lines with this person again is uh, I, I tell people to because relationships are work. They are a responsibility. Right. And when we're talking to someone who uh, who we've been in a relationship with or we're married to. Uh, a good conversation, a way to open this dialogue up is to, on a Sunday, maybe weekly, maybe monthly, however often you feel it's, uh, it, you want to do this, ask, how have I been this week as a wife? On a scale from 1 to 10, right? And let's say that he says a 7. Then explore a little bit deeper. Well, what could I have done better uh, to get closer to a 10, right? Or what, what, could I, what, what did I do well, right? Well, you know, we had a lot of sex this week, and it was great, and this and that. Um, you know, I also, but uh, the things that you could Im- could have improved on is, um, you know, whenever I, maybe he says, like, whenever I leave the house, right, you never, you don't kiss me goodbye like you like you used to, you don't check in with me like I like you used to, and I don't feel like you care about me anymore, right, flat out. And what happens is that as you ask that question about yourself, it's very natural. Now, as I'm saying this, this will not work with a narcissist. So those of you who are writing this down for a narcissist, it will not work, right? But someone who has a level of empathy will flip that question around because it will bother them too much to know that you are proactively working on the relationship and proactively becoming a better person. And they will ask you, well, what could I have done better as a husband, right? And then guess what? Now we can have dialogue. Now we can negotiate new terms of this relationship, right? Love is an emotion. You can fall in and out of love with, with people all the time, right? You're not going to love the person. And, and this narrative that the person that's the person's responsibility to make you happy is not true. It's their responsibility to be a good support system. So look for, instead of trying to fall back in love, look for, look for ways that you guys can support each other and allow for that, that, that nurturing um, part of the relationship to cause you to, to cause love in the relationship to, um, to come back into the relationship. Um, now, I'm also, not, I'm also not a big fan of staying in relationships that you're, that you're unhappy with. If you continue to do this, I, this, this is something that you can do to explore the relationship Right. But long term, right, if you're not fulfilled in the relationship, it is completely okay to walk away. But I would explore first, especially if you guys have children.